Hey people, how are you all? I know it's been quite a while, but I have been extraordinarily busy the last month or so, so I haven't really had time to record much. But I'm here now, so that's cool. We're back to scripted videos because the last one was utter chaos and probably a really horrendous idea. Today I'm going to be talking about my first term studying an animation degree and all about kind of what that's been like. The painting I'm doing is completely unrelated to said degree. It's a piece for an Arthuriana Secret Santa gift exchange I'm taking part in. And for those who are interested, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. However, if you clicked on this video and are disappointed because you wanted to see some of the work I've actually done on this degree course so far, then stick that down in the comments and I can definitely make a video going over some of that in February once I've gotten my grades back for the term and stuff. It's just I didn't bring my hard drive with all my uni work home with me, so it kind of assembling that was going to take way too much time and effort and I don't have the stuff for it. So without further ado, let's get into it! I also just want to apologise real quick if the audio is less pleasant than usual because I couldn't be bothered bringing my pop filter or my mic stand home for Christmas, I literally just have the mic, which I don't know how much worse it sounds when it's not like fixed somewhere and when I'm just kind of waving it around like crazy, but oh well, it'll be fine. The first thing I should probably mention is that technically the year isn't split into three terms like it was at secondary school. Instead we have two semesters. Semesters is still a really weird word to me. I thought they only used that in America, but apparently I was wrong. The first of those two semesters is not actually finished yet. Unlike some of the more academic courses out there, which pretty much wrap learning at Christmas and then sit exams in January, we instead just have had staggered portfolio hands in for our various modules, most of which are now hand in, but one in 3D animation CGI uh, will still need to be finished up when we go back, so that's kind of what I'm doing in January. I'm making this video now as opposed to then, as I'm pretty sure we go straight into the second semester once that hand in's done, and finding the time to record is going to be so much harder then than it is now when I essentially have no work that needs doing. So yeah. I chose this course specifically because it aims to teach animation completely from scratch, which was very useful for me given I didn't do A-level art. Uh, the first semester was comprised of three modules, one in 3D and CGI, one in 2D stop motion drawing skills, and one in theory and underpinning. I reckon they've all been pretty good, if a little chaotic in places, but I'll explain. The 3D module is probably the one I have the least to say about since it's not finished yet. I was completely new to 3D animation, as was most of the class, and whilst I did try really hard to go into everything on this course with like an open mind, with so much new software to learn, this one has been a touch overwhelming. All of our lessons seem to be either between 2 and 4 p.m. or 4 and 6 p.m. and so my brain is only functioning for like a third of that time properly because it's getting late and I'm just like, I want to go to bed. So far we've mostly done animation in a program called Maya, which if you know anything about animation you've probably heard of it, and if you don't, look it up. It's, it's cool, it does a lot of stuff. Uh, we've also briefly touched on some of the 3D modelling tools, uh, ZBrush and Substance Painter, in the last few weeks, but we've not done much on those yet, so I really have no idea where I'm up to with them. I am slowly starting to get the hang of Maya, I think, and I know that a lot of the class feels similarly, as none of us have ever tried it before, but I'm starting to see that 3D is probably never going to be my thing, if that makes sense. I just don't find it as enjoyable as some of the other areas, but it has been kind of interesting to learn. Uh, I've definitely picked up some skills that are applicable to the other areas, and like, and sometimes it's just like fun to kind of mess around with the models a bit and like, I don't know, make them do funny dances and stuff, so yeah. Next we have what I'm going to refer to as the 2D module. Although it actually contains a whole load more stuff, in fact one of the criticisms I think my year has fed back to the tutors is that there is way too much stuff in this one tiny module that is the exact same size as the other two modules. And it did cause a couple of problems just in terms of like the distribution of work. Most significantly in the stop motion section as we got way less lessons on this than in some of the other areas. Partly it was because our lecturer was busy at the start of term working on an actual film project for an animation studio, which is very cool. But even once she did get back we still had far fewer lectures and sessions with her than we did in the other areas of both this module and certainly less than we had of the other two modules. 
That didn't mean that those few sessions we did of stop motion were not super fun though. In fact, playing with plasticine is really, really fun and I love that it's a part of my degree that I just get to like be a little kid and make tiny little plasticine rabbits to animate, so that's great. The 2D module of course also contained 2D animation. This was mildly frustrating, but became less so as the term went on, mostly because I got much more used to the software. We're using a program called TV Paint, which is fine, but was really annoying me early in the term because I often wanted to do something simple like transform and move a shape that would be so easy to do in my normal art program, and the fact that I couldn't work out how to do it was driving me slightly insane, but I did get there eventually. I also found that I maybe struggle to possess the focus and patience required for, well, pretty much all kinds of animation, but it was more noticeable here than in the other two, I think. I often had animations that were just a few frames short in a couple of places and then jumped a little bit because of that. It was mostly the sort of thing that was easy to fix on a second pass once someone had pointed it out to me, so all in all not too bad and it was fun, so you know. Then we get on to my favourite parts of the course, also part of the 2D module, and that's the drawing for animation and storyboarding classes. Drawing for animation is great, my tutor is genuinely so good, and some of the exercises she's had us do are the most helpful things ever. I might even do a video sharing some of them at some point, the way she was kind of teaching us to think about objects in 3D space and how we can use that to build up people. It was such good stuff. She also takes us for life drawing sessions, which despite requiring me to walk 20 minutes downhill at 9 in the morning, are surprisingly enjoyable. I was definitely worried that I'd find them kind of really stressful or just incredibly awkward, but honestly, you just kind of show up, I put my headphones in, and I draw people for two hours. It's great. And finally, for this module, storyboarding. Now, I think from an entirely subjective standpoint, drawing for animation sessions are slightly better than the storyboarding sessions. My storyboarding tutor tends to just kind of throw tasks and scripts at us and then give us feedback once he's seen our attempts rather than kind of explaining how he would go about it and then seeing what we do. But damn if I don't love storyboarding. It's so much fun to kind of figure out scenes and interactions and stuff, which I mean, probably should have been evident given the way I spend all my spare time on my comic and various animatics. I do have another one of those coming, by the way. It's still only about half done, but I'm, I'm slowly getting there. But yeah, this is my favourite bit. It's so good. My tutor constantly shows us kind of professional storyboards from various actual films, which is also super helpful. And he did this one thing, uh, one lesson, where he went around the class and one at a time he would put our storyboards up on the big screen in front of everybody. Uh, the class is only about 12 people, but you know, in front of the entire class and then have the class feed back on it. And usually this sort of thing would terrify me, but I think the fact that no one had to get up and present anything made it surprisingly not that scary. And it was really super helpful in terms of getting feedback and advice on my work. And I actually quite liked it as a, uh, method of getting peer review stuff because when you get up in like little groups and there's not a teacher involved people tend to just say nice stuff because they don't want to offend anybody um whereas this was really like we actually got valuable information out of it which is really cool then the final module is the theory one this was really good turns out i quite like media analysis once we get to examining specific examples the seminars we've done in particular were really good, but I must admit they have also kind of ruined Disney for me just, just a little bit. I sort of knew this was inevitable when I applied for an animation degree, but damn, the one thing stereotype theory in animation has taught me is that you absolutely should not watch anything that was made in the 1940s. Like, at all. It's terrifying. Just don't even look, and then you can pretend the world's not as mean and cruel and horrible a place as you'd like it to be. But it was uh, still loads of fun, I do quite like the theory stuff, particularly once we started moving on to like, uh, realism is really interesting to do in animation. And some of the other ther stereotype theory, uh, kind of looking at how, you know, coded meanings and things, we did uh, the whole thing about villain coding and touching into like the queer coded uh, Disney villains, which was a really fun seminar. This module is also technically unfinished, as we do have a few more lectures in January. However, 70% of the marks for this module come on a 2000 word essay, which we already wrote and handed in at the end of November. So to all intents and purposes, this module is done now. I personally didn't hate the essay. 
I wrote it on why the Lion King 2019 film sucks and it was great fun but my classmates seem to disagree about this and honestly that's kind of fair most people come on this course because they want to draw things not do academics but hey I enjoyed it so that's the course itself. As for the whole surviving uni thing, that's also mostly going pretty well. I finally caved and requested to move rooms on the off chance there was something spare, and as such have escaped my shared room and my roommate. Like I mentioned previously, she wasn't a bad roommate per se, I was just really starting to struggle with the concept of not having my own space away from other people where I could actually relax. And also the sleep deprivation was getting to me just a little bit. But I have made lots of friends, I think. I think I've pretty much sorted out who I'm living with next year, which is really cool. The few times I've tried to go out, like, I don't know, to the pub or whatever, uh, have failed spectacularly because the pubs always seem to be packed or shut. But I'm not really a drinker, so it's not been masses of an issue for me. And Falmouth is a tiny town, like, people don't come here for the nightlife. Um, <laughs> I have been drinking lots of coffee though and hanging out with people in the studios instead, which is a really good substitute of social interaction for me. I've also somewhat managed to cook decent food most of the time. There have been a few interesting experiments, but I have successfully eaten dinner every night, so I consider that a win. I think I've eaten lunch every day as well, so, you know, like two decent meals a day, sometimes I had breakfast as well, like, I'm winning. It's great. I'm also just about scraping enough free time for my comic updates, although this last one was a little bit late, I must be honest, but I'm kind of blaming that on all the deadlines we had. I've been making an effort this Christmas to catch back up though, and hopefully I might even manage to get a one chapter buffer, or even just like a half chapter buffer kind of sorted so that I don't miss another deadline between now and Easter. By the way, if you do want to check out my comic, there's a link in the link tree in the description. Yes, I've reached the point of YouTube now where I am advertising my own things. It's brilliant. But all in all, I'd say first semester at uni is going really, really good. I do very genuinely love this course so much and I am so excited about everything I've learned so far and I'm really looking forward to next term because we're doing more of like the character and setting design type stuff, which is kind of very much uh, up my street. I, I love character design. And finally, as promised, I'm now going to talk about the actual artwork that I've been doing in this video. Hopefully none of the people from the Arthur Arena Discord are here because it wasn't really clarified how secret the Secret Santa was supposed to be and I like this piece too much not to post it, so here it is. The person I'm creating this for had a wish list that was basically Sir Gwaine, possibly Arthur, but I went with Gwaine, and specifically they really like Sir Gwaine's romantic exploits, and as a side note, they also really ship him with Lancelot. Now, whilst that is honestly a very valid ship, and something I would totally back in its original context, I didn't really want to draw my version of Lancelot for this, because Having spent so long developing his relationship with different people in my comic, it feels a little off here to kind of go down a whole other route and draw my Lancelot with Gwaine. So instead, I decided to go the full bisexual polyamorous Gwaine, which is the best interpretation, I will not be taking arguments against this, and draw him in a cute pose with a new pair of characters. Usually I draw this version of Gwaine in an adorable relationship with the Green Knight and his wife, but here I decided to do away with that idea completely and instead draw two vaguely ambiguous characters, although I loosely base them on the more common visuals for Lancelot and Galahad, and then the lady is potentially a version of Dame Ragnall, maybe? Although it's really hard to find image references for her in her more beautiful form, and so I just sort of freestyled it a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I decided to stick with my comic version of Gwen because I really like it. I, I love his hair and I didn't want to have to design something new, so we get my classic kind of Green Knight Gwen here just with different people, but oh well. I also tried really hard here to incorporate some of the shading things I learned whilst doing my gym portrait. I think probably the shadows should have been a little bit darker to kind of give more contrast because it still looks a little flat, but I did put in like the little blue shadow effect that I'm really quite proud of. I also think I got the general colour palette looking pretty nice, which, I mean, I cut it out of the video, but I spent like an hour just testing colour combinations on the sketch, and this was the best I managed, so... 
yeah, I'm kind of proud of how it turned out. I think it probably could have done better, but trying to colour coordinate three characters without them looking like they're wearing the exact same outfit is really hard. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm planning on putting another one out at New Year's, so hopefully you won't have to wait months this time. But if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and I will see you all soon. Bye.